Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us uh, once again here for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first has this weather graphic. We've got uh, winter weather advisories out uh, for tonight until about uh, late morning or midday tomorrow here for the uh, eastern Arctic coast and the eastern north slope uh, for uh, gusty winds and uh, snow occasionally blowing and drifting, so that will reduce visibilities in these areas here. Uh, could see gusts uh, 30 miles an hour out along the eastern coast or higher uh, later or tonight into early tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, no watches, warnings, or advisories anywhere else in the state, at least for tonight and through tomorrow. And satellite imagery showing, uh, well, out here to the west, the next system, another pretty good, uh, strong, low-pressure area pulling up toward the uh, Russian coast to the front pushing east and northeast here, and in advance of the front, some pretty good ridging developing over the eastern Bering Sea, even though there is a pretty good wind flow aloft pulling some of the higher clouds eastward into the ridge axis and then southeastward across the Alaska Peninsula. And just a, kind of a weak trailing edge of this front uh, dragging eastward there, although uh, gale force winds gust 50 miles an hour did affect the Western Aleutians, but the rain has ended at Chimia there, and this pushing into ADAC, but the, uh, this portion of the front really weakening, so I wouldn't expect uh, 50 mile an hour wind gusts at ADAC and just some light rain when that does pass. Otherwise, uh, dry here in the western interior with some clearing on the increase. Uh, some clouds, a uh, few flurries, or actually, uh, depending on the time of day, uh, rain or snow showers, very light there, kind of a persistent area, light snow up along the Arctic coast, uh, central areas back to the west a little bit, and it dries out again over toward Kaktovik with uh, some fog today at Dead Horse. And the eastern interior seeing uh, the shower activity push eastward and slowly begin to taper off today with uh, Copper River Basin basically dry and clearing skies here across uh, southern Alaska. The fl flow becomes offshore with high pressure ridging here to the west and a pretty active front uh, swinging through the southeast coast today brought an uh, inch and a half of rain the last 24 hours to uh, Juneau while Sitka picked up uh, one and two thirds inches of precipitation. And farther to the south, down there in that drought area, Kowak had half an inch or a little over half an inch of rain. And uh, that'll be uh, persisting over the southern areas tonight as the front kind of shifts eastward and continues to drag across the southern areas and it'll become more showering eventually and over the northern uh, part of that area. Otherwise, uh, as I mentioned, dry for the Gulf of Alaska, even skies clearing in the offshore areas there. And rolling this through again, you can see some cloudiness dissipating as it crosses the Alaska range there and the downslope conditions developing. But there will be an area of uh, light precipitation persisting uh, at least probably through tonight here, especially from about Denali Park or uh, maybe Minchumina eastward there and on the north side of the mountains. And for, let's jump to today's analysis. Uh, there's that area of light precipitation today persisting there and some of that extending up toward the Eagle area. But south of the mountains beginning to clear out now. It's starting to get a little breezy here. Gusts, uh, let's see, for the uh, Kodiak Island area. I believe Akiak and both Kodiak State Airport had reported gusts to 40 miles an hour out of the northwest. Breezy conditions here up into the southern Kenai Peninsula and Kamishak Bay areas with uh, Seward, I believe, had gusts 25 to 30 miles an hour out of the uh, north. And also uh, north winds, Anatovic gusts 35 miles an hour today, and they picked up uh, about uh, maybe half an inch or an inch of new snow there. Temperatures staying uh, below freezing the entire day today. Otherwise, uh, on the, associated with this front, in advance of this front, Cape Decision had winds gust to 60 miles an hour, at least a peak wind gust. Otherwise, uh, as it passed through as the original low track northeastward last night, late last night, early this morning, Juneau had a gust to about 45 miles an hour. 
Anyway, all conditions there will be improving. This front will gradually move even out of the southern areas and uh, offshore flow will begin to take over the northern panhandle. Out to the west, that storm system for tonight pushes eastward here with uh, rain spreading up toward St. Lawrence Island and increasing winds. Probably some gale force winds will be up in the northern areas. You can see the gradient really slacks off as you head down toward the Adak Athka area, but a band of rain will move across that zone. High pressure here shifts eastward into the uh, western central interior, the axis from the 1,030 millibar high extending up to the Brooks Range. Leftover moisture flurries, clouds on the western Arctic coast. Uh, light snow continues here from the across the eastern north slope on out toward areas east of uh, Prudhoe Bay or Dead Horse. Uh, Barter Island probably see light snow occur much of the night tonight. Again, blowing and drifting a little bit, but nothing too serious. And then the shower activity in the form of snow persists along the uh, uh, north side of the Alaska Range here, all the way over into the, uh, oh, say, the uh, Burwash area destruction bay zone. And also that front out of the panhandle, showers though with a trough that hangs back will persist uh, through the night tonight. And then those will be pretty slow to end tomorrow. They should gradually shut off by later in the afternoon, even over the uh, extreme southern areas, possibly even Hyder and Stewart with northeast winds drying it out and look for a sunny day here across all of the Panhandle, sunny North Gulf Coast, Copper River Basin, uh, South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, the Kodiak Island, nothing uh, but sun tomorrow and light winds here right under the ridge axis, maybe a few isolated flurries, but nothing significant here on the east side or north side of the Alaska Range. Uh, pretty nice conditions, but that persistent trough keeps a chance of light snow going on the eastern Arctic coast. Otherwise, a good jet here pushes this moisture and frontal boundary eastward, so look for the rain to increase here. Uh, definitely uh, in, or push eastward to about uh, maybe into the spill into the Cuscombe Valley and up here for the Seward Peninsula area on back to the Bering Strait. Whatever starts out in the form of rain or snow will quickly change over to rain. Some of that could be moderate at times. I don't think there'll be anything heavy, but uh, it'll definitely be a wet, windy day tomorrow with those south winds possibly gusting anywhere from 30 to 50 miles per hour with those higher gusts out along the coastline. And back to the west, uh, just some showers that are north of the Aleutian. So at ADAC looking good in the afternoon and evening and maybe even some sun farther to the west. I look for Tuesday, this whole system pushes eastward slowly as the upper level ridge, a whole upper pattern aloft, slowly pushing eastward. Now we have the ridging here mostly over the panhandle, so it'll be another nice dry day that in that area with a lot of sunshine and maybe a few clouds. Winds will be light, should stay dry with increasing clouds over the Copper River Basin, mostly the mid and high level variety. Look for showers to develop throughout the day or the chance will increase over the Kenai Peninsula with rain pushing across the Alaska Range Possibly getting into, uh, well, from Shelikoff Strait, trying to get into Cook Inlet, maybe the western Susitna Valley area is kind of a mix here uh, from the Alaska Range into the central interior ahead of the warm front. Uh, snow, light snow there coming up toward the southern slopes of the Brooks Range, northern and upper Yukon Valley. And that am those amounts, will, er, the snow will become heavier to the west there on the uh, southern slopes of the western Brooks Range. Then a break right behind the front, followed by a trough and showery conditions. Uh, but wind's not too bad, still breezy here across the Seward Peninsula, Yukon Delta areas, but uh, farther to the west, really uh, high pressure uh, trying to build back in, weak trough coming over the top of it, sort of suppressing it uh, to a certain extent. Anyway, for lows tonight for the southeast coast, 30, or 30 to 40 we should about cover it there. Warmest in the south, coolest in the north will be clearing out, and the uh, cooler, drier air out of uh, Canada will begin to slip on in. Upper teens, Copper River Basin, otherwise 20s here. South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, all the way up Manuska, Susitna Valley, and 20s also for the Tanaha Valley, and uh, down 10 to 15 in the Brooks Range, and 20s lower 30s along the Arctic coast. And the highs tomorrow, we've got uh, lower 50s, Central Aleutians, Pribilofs, mid 40s for St. Lawrence Island, mid 50s for the uh, Eastern Aleutians there, and that'll cool down to the upper 40s for Kodiak Island and King Salmon. Otherwise, highs in the 40s for the Panhandle. Lows the following morning, uh, looking something like this, uh, 5 to 10 for the Brooks Range there. It looks like Anantufa could be the coldest, getting down, uh, starting to approach that zero mark, but five above your forecast low. Otherwise, uh, lower to mid-20s on the eastern Arctic coast, upper 20s to lower 30s on the west side. 
and near 40, definitely a push of warm air coming northward here. So upper 30s to lower 40s across the Seward Peninsula, southward all the way to uh, Bristol Bay, mid to upper 40s Alaska Peninsula, upper 20s to lower 30s South Central Alaska, and in the uh, 20s to mid 30s for the Panhandle, highs will be in the 40s once again there, and near 40 for the Copper River Basin, 40s here south of the Alaska Range, 30s to the north, and then 20s and 30s there back to the uh, Arctic coast with highs in the lower to maybe mid 50s there for the Bristol Bay area. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First flying weather graphic for Monday morning, a uh, zone of IFR here associated with that uh, frontal system coming eastward across the Bering Sea, kind of expands down here across the Aleutians with IFR uh, almost a false pass uh, by late tonight. Otherwise, the marginal VFR and IFR increasing over the northern Bering Sea to the Bering Strait. IFR there looks like the eastern north slope and mostly marginal for the Arctic coast. And VFR for the interior, the exception here along the Alaska Range along and north side there, looking marginal VFR south of the mountains there right into the Gulf of Alaska and mostly VFR here for the southeast coast. And for the afternoon, a little bit of marginal conditions hanging on over there toward the uh, Oh, Stewart or Hyder. Otherwise, VFR all the way back across the Gulf into the uh, central eastern interior areas, increasing or lowering conditions, lowering ceilings of visibilities of IFR, pushing inland a little bit there for the Yukon Cusquam Delta, mostly uh, north of the Cusquam Bay area, south side of the Seward Peninsula through the Strait, and some moisture increases here uh, near and just east of the Milado Hills, back up into the Nonotak Valley. VFR, central western north slope, Arctic coast, IFR showing up there on the east side, just grazing the coastline. And the Aleutians uh, from about the Pribilofs late in the afternoon becoming VFR, Adak Yatka all the way out to Shimia with VFR. And for uh, Thursday morning, those areas go back to mostly marginal, but not too bad, and quite an area of IFR now pushing in to the, uh, into the central interior back to the west and northward there to the western north slope extending south there across the Cusquam River Valley and Delta right on down to the Alaska Peninsula. Marginal VFR now spreading over Kodiak Island, uh, but not quite the Barrens. Kenai Peninsula eastward VFR and northward here uh, VFR, as well as the Panhandle. And then for the afternoon, we've got uh, VFR conditions holding here for the southeast coast but that moisture slipping on into the central interior, so marginal or IFR conditions pretty likely here from the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay, south central Alaska, northward, uh, especially the upslope areas of the southern and southeast slopes of uh, any terrain here, uh, definitely IFR and an IFR central western Arctic coast and better conditions oh, out over the Bering Sea, uh, mostly marginal with uh, some areas of VFR thrown in. And for the uh, passes for Anatovic and Adigan, both starting out marginal becoming VFR tomorrow, and Lake Clark and Merrill, VFR the entire day, but rainy, uh, starting out a little marginal, then becoming VFR by mid to late morning, and windy, marginal VFR becomes VFR. Isabel, VFR, Mentesta, marginal, lingering moisture, but that'll give way to VFR flying uh, late in the morning and through the afternoon, too. And for Tanita, VFR, Portage. VFR, Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels, still cold air aloft or cooler air here, 2,000 feet down to the North Gulf Coast, back along the southwest coast at the surface, right on its heels, 2,000 feet over the Panhandle. South to north flow here ahead of that frontal system, pulling 12,000 foot freezing levels up to the eastern Aleutians, 2,000 feet up to St. Lawrence Island. Icing along in advance of the frontal boundary, this whole area moving slowly eastward with a south to north flow there. Could be a narrow band of uh, occasional moderate rime icing Saint, or Nunavak Island, Yukon Delta coast of the Bering Strait. And the jet stream, high pressure here coming through. It's by no means a blocking ridge. A good flow coming through the ridge axis, but uh, strong enough to make for a nice day here over the interior tomorrow with a pretty good jet, 140 knots, going to drive that front right in toward the coast. And 9,000 feet, we've got uh, southwest winds here south to southwest winds, mostly southwest, increasing uh, size 40 knots here from the uh, Nunavak Island, Yukon Delta coast out to the Pribilofs, 
And on the increase, uh, but not quite as strong for the Alaska Peninsula, lighter under the ridge axis, northwesterlies 30 knots across the, Aleut or across the uh, panhandle, and a 3,000 feet, 25 to 30 knot northerlies there. Those will be diminishing in the afternoon as this ridge axis moves eastward, increasing south winds here, 20 to 40 knots in the west. And turbulence-wise, uh, looking something like this uh, with the uh, wind, Occasional moderate chop or considerable moderate chop, pretty likely here, especially for small aircraft from the northwest coast, right on down into the Yukon Cusquam uh, Delta area and uh, St. Lawrence Island. Not too bad for the Aleutians and a little bumpy over the panhandle. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder, and joining me again is Cindy Preller. She's the Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska Region's National Weather Service. Thanks again for joining us, Cindy. Thanks for having me back, Dave. Sure thing. And I, I love saying Tsunami Program Manager for Alaska's National Weather Service because that's not weather. Why is the Tsunami Program part of the National Weather Service? Well, it's because the Weather Service absolutely rocks at warning people for every kind of, you know, devastating natural hazard. Mm -hmm. the, the mission of the Weather Service is to protect life and property. And so how does the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska, which is a very unique office, again, within the Weather Service, it's not weather, how do those folks help us protect life and property? The National Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer is a national warning center mm -hmm. and we analyze seismic traces 24-7 okay. all around the world. So when there's an earthquake anywhere on the planet, we see it and mm -hmm. analyze it within minutes. Within minutes, and, within and there's minutes. actually a goal to have it under, was it five minutes? Mm -hmm. we, if there okay. is a tsunami warning to be issued for continental America, okay. um, yeah, we must get that out or wow. shoot to get that out in five minutes. Okay. Now, that, that's not something I have ever learned to do, so I know it would be a struggle for me to do that under <laughs> probably hours, but it is fascinating to watch, and, and the, the office is open on a regular basis for tours, right? Absolutely. Come by okay. Friday. Okay. Yep, every Friday. Friday at 1, 2, and 3 p.m., and they're open public free tours. And they're, it's the most interesting place on the planet. You really should check it out. Okay, and, and the, the, the office team is made up of of people that are earth scientists, not meteorologists or atmospheric scientists. Talk about some of the types of people that work there. Right, we are out of place in our <laughs> National Weather Service, but um, yeah, we are geologists, uh -huh. geophysicists, um, oceanographers. We even have an astrophysicist on board, mm -hmm. uh, uh, computer software architects, yeah. um, electronic technicians that are brilliant and innovative. Our software is all written in-house. Our instrumentation is designed in-house. Okay. So it's a really, really unique place, and it's just a couple handfuls of people that work there. So Sure. Yeah. One of my favorite ways to get a tsunami alert message is on Twitter. Right. And I can follow the, the Twitter address, and we'll put that up on the screen for you there. But it's usually a very quick message that tells you initially what the magnitude of an earthquake could be and about where its uh, epicenter was. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other ways that you can get that alert message? Well, I, Twitter's my favorite, too. Yeah. And you don't even need a Twitter account to receive right. it. So you, it right. just comes in like an SMS message. But mm -hmm. um, you can also receive it via email, mm -hmm. weather radio, of course, mm -hmm. um, the crawler on your television screen, mm -hmm. uh, on the Internet, Google Alerts, right. um, marine radio if you're out in harbors and boats. Mm -hmm. Actually, marine radio is probably... Yeah, it is a good one. That's our partnership with the Coast Guard. We're really yeah. grateful for that, yeah. absolutely. But there's a variety of ways in dissemination. Okay. And locally, excuse me, I'm sorry, but sure. locally in the communities, the sirens will go off as right. well. Right, right. So lots of different ways to get that very important message very quickly mm -hmm. when, that, when that matters to you. Uh, one of the ways that the, the warning center practices with communities is a test on a, on a yearly basis, right? Right. How does that work? Thanks for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a controversial issue, but it's super important mm -hmm. to help us warn better and really serve Alaskans. Um, so the week of March 27th, the commemoration of the 1964 right. event, for that week we have a Tsunami Preparedness Week every mm -hmm. year. We like communities to get out and do drills and practice and, and do everything we can to raise awareness. And right. part of that is a live code test where we actually issue the warning message live and we activate the um, emergency alert system, which means sirens go off, the mm -hmm. TV crawler 
happens and it's a test, 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 test. We're and doing everything that would normally happen without the real threat of the tsunami, just to, right. to, to practice as much as possible. Right, and this okay. is a major partnership with the state of Alaska, mm -hmm. Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management, the Emergency Operations Center, right. and the Alaska Broadcasters Association. Without the media, we wouldn't be able to do this. So right. the three groups really work tightly together to mm -hmm to do our best to warn, educate the public that right. this is happening mm -hmm. so they don't wonder and get scared about it. Um, it has been remarkable what we've learned. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it pretty much breaks somewhere every time, sure. but then we fix it and right. it gets better. So a, a quick example is just a few years ago, mm -hmm. we used to, when we issued a message, it would activate the entire state. Right. Right? I mean, Kotzebue, Nome, Bethel, mm -hmm. everybody would be in tsunami warning. And so now we can uh, regionalize it to where the actual event is taking place. Right. That's pretty huge. Right, right. So identifying points of failure and also points of success and making sure we continue down that successful path so that folks are warned as quickly and accurately as possible. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, to get our communities involved to prep themselves, prep their businesses, right. prep their tourism, prep their schools, you know, just make this a, a, an annual thing they need to be doing. Right. So as citizens uh, wanting to be prepared, we should be prepared to learn more about that test that's uh, happening usually toward the end of March every year. Right. And you should be happy that it's happening. Right. Instead of upset. Definitely be right. happy that it's happening. Right. Just, just as we test tornado sirens in tornado country, we also have to test the tsunami program as well. Right. Because there isn't enough time. You know, for right. a local tsunami, the wave will arrive in less than two minutes. So it's super important that people know what to do. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, Cindy, thank you so much for helping us know more about the Tsunami Ready Program and the test and the Tsunami Warning Center. It's a very unique and very important job in the National Weather Service that is just fascinating to me every time I visit the office. So it's the only one for the continent. You really should come check it out. It's an international effort. Yes. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Dave. And thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, today's sea ice analysis, uh, no uh, real evident change here from what we had the last couple of days. Still gradually increasing here way out, way to the north of the Arctic coast and still uh, a ways away from seeing ice form here along the coastline, uh, especially here on the west side. Uh, for the next several days. And for the coastal water forecast, we've got small craft advisories on the south coast here with uh, winds out of the north, 25 knots in those seas, 11 to 13 feet, and even stronger small craft advisory level winds of 30 knots here far on the north coast out of the north northeast, 9 to 10 foot seas, and high end gale force gusts for Lynn Canal out of the north to 45 knots. 40 knot northerly gusts with 25 knot sustained winds for Stevens Passage. Clarence Strait, northwest 25 knots and seas running 5 feet. Outlook for Tuesday, uh, winds come down, all areas here. North 15 for the inside water, seas 3 feet. South coast, uh, north 20, 8 to 9 foot seas and then becoming light and variable 10 to 15 knots. Say northwest 15 here on the north coast and then getting kind of uh, squirrely up here. Yakutat over into the eastern north Gulf Coast. And for Cook Inlet, northeast, 10 knots tomorrow, seas 2 feet, give or take. And Kamishak Bay, though, still a pretty good breeze, west 25 by comparison, uh, with seas 6 feet, northwest 20 there. For the Barren Islands and the western north Gulf Coast, small craft advisories for northerly 25 and 15 knot winds from the north for Prince William Sound. We also swing around to the southeast on Tuesday there with uh, winds becoming south 15 in the afternoon for the eastern north Gulf Coast, west side, southwest 15. Pick up to about 20 knots for the Barren Islands. South winds 20 knots, Kamishak Bay, Southern Cook Inlet, but north of the Forelands, they come down to about 15 knots with seas running three feet north of the Forelands, Southern Cook Inlet, five feet. Bristol Bay, south winds at 10 tomorrow, four foot seas, and southerly winds blowing across the Alaska Peninsula will be 25 knots on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. South side, south 15, or 15 knot winds with 9 foot seas, and then Castle Cape to Sitkanak, west at 20, west 15, Shelikoff Strait, and then back up to northwest at 20 for the east side of Kodiak. And then on 
Tuesday, those winds turn southwest but hold the 20 knot speed. South 25 here, southwest to Sitkanak, up in across Yellowcoff Strait, south 25 also for Bristol Bay. And 25 knot southwest winds here for the uh, Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Seas up to 10 feet, southwest 20 on the Pacific side with 7 foot seas. Fox Island, subtly winds 20 to 25 knots tomorrow. Seas running 6 to 7 feet. Central Aleutians, southwest 20 to 25 knots with seas running 8 to Oh, say 13 feet, I believe that says, yes. And then gales out over the western Aleutians there from about Kiska on out to Shimia at 35 knots with 23 foot seas. And then for Tuesday, small craft advisory winds here from Shimia all the way to the north side of both Adak and Atka, and actually even Unmak Island, out of the west 25 knots. Otherwise, south of the islands here, northwest 20 with 8-foot seas, and that extends to the south side of both Unmac and Alaska Islands as well, seas running 6 feet. And for the uh, south, southwest coast, southerly 30 knots tomorrow, but that'll be gales uh, for St. Lawrence Island with seas there up to 13 feet, 30-knot winds from the south in Norton Sound, and gales here for the northern Bering Sea and St. Matthew Island. And 30 knot winds for the Pribilofs from the south, seas 12 feet. Outlook for Tuesday, south winds 25 knots, Norton Sound, St. Lawrence Island, southwest 25 here for the southwest coast, west 25 for the Pribilofs, and west 30 for St. Matthew Island. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, a little breezy, west winds 25 knots, falling back to northwest 15 on the central coast, light on the west side, Cape Beaufort to, or from Cape Beaufort on down to Wales, small craft advisory, southeast 25 to 30. And then those will drop back to about uh, 20 knots on Tuesday in that zone, in those zones, and east 25 for the western Arctic coast, and then diminishing down to uh, 10 to 15 for the eastern stretch of the coastline. For tonight, again, lingering snow showers along the Alaska Range and some lingering light snow up over the eastern Arctic coast with that winter weather advisory out tonight in that area for the eastern north slope. Otherwise, pretty good here, diminishing winds across uh, southern Alaska and the Kodiak Island area, and then that front drag some precipitation uh, as it weakens across the Adak and Atka and dries out over the Panhandle, leading to a mostly sunny day tomorrow there and pretty nice over the central eastern interior. Clouds increase with a good shot of rain and wind coming into the uh, mostly the Yukon Delta up to the Bering Strait and Seward Peninsula area. <clears throat> and that whole system pushes eastward into the interior the following day with snow in the north and rain in the south. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.